avoid coming to China if you have an allergy because it can literally be a life and death situation. Now, far be it from me to discourage anyone to travel to China. I think it's a fantastic experience. If you ever get the chance, I suggest it to absolutely anyone. There are a number of reasons why, not just for the adventure of it, but to, you know, experience a different culture, to give you an idea of how people live outside of your own country. Because I can pretty much guarantee you, unless you are living in Asia, uh, that you're not going to experience anything. Quite like China, anywhere near where you live, and of course the food and the people, and I can go on forever and ever. But there is a big problem, and that is the ignorance that surrounds allergies here in China. And this is no joke; it is infuriating, just how little people in China understand about allergies. Now, I know when I was growing up, a fair number of my friends had allergies. Whether it be peanut allergies or allergies to pollen, you know, hay fever type stuff, or you know, seafood, various different things. I myself personally am allergic to a certain type of antibiotic, which I found out the hard way because I was sick and my grandmother gave me this antibiotic and I almost almost died. And I was for a time when I was young, I was living on a bee farm and I got stung so many times that I actually developed an allergy to bee stings. That seems to have gone away because I got stung a while back and nothing happened.、Um, anyway, I'm also allergic to shrimp, and I found this out the hard way too because I ate a shrimp one day. And long story short, I was、um, vegetarian for a big portion of my life, and I didn't get around to eating seafood until I was probably about 19 or 20. And the first time I tried a,、uh, a shrimp, I literally. Almost died, you know. My throat closed up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm allergic to shrimp. Now, in China, especially in southern China, shrimp is a major ingredient in like a huge amount of dishes. I'd say Asian dishes in general, because if you look at like、uh, Vietnamese food and Thai food, etc., they all include shrimp. And whether it's like in a spring roll or part of a of dim sum, it's like in almost every dim sum dish. Or just used as flavoring, they use this stuff called shafen, which is like a shrimp powder, which is made up of dried up, ground up shrimp, sh- shrimp shells or whatever. Basically, shrimp is a major thing. So of course, when I'm trying something new, or we go to a restaurant, because my wife loves shrimp, by the way, we go to a restaurant and we order something. One of the main things I do is make sure I ask them, I ask the waiter, you know, is there shrimp in this? And of course, I, I say it very clearly in Chinese and Mandarin, and they understand me. And they usually say, "Oh no, there's no shrimp." Or they say, "Okay, we'll go and ask." And they go ask the cook or whatever, and they come back and they say, "There's no shrimp." And about 60% of the time, when they say there's no shrimp, and I take a bite of that food, there is shrimp. You know, it's it boggles the mind. It's like they just don't understand what's in their own food, or they just want to. Feign ignorance, or it's too much hassle for them to find out. But a lot of times, I'll bite into it, and like there's half a shrimp there, and I have to spit it out. So there's shrimp in it, or could, of course I know what shrimp tastes like, so I taste it. And I'm like there's definitely shrimp in this. And then when we look, yeah, they're using like that shrimp powder. But then they're like, you say it's got shrimp powder. They're like, yeah, but that's not shrimp. You know that kind of nonsense. So sorry for the noise. They're using using packing tape. For all these like smuggled goods over here,、um, you know, I've done that thing about milk powder. When they bring it over the border, you've got these handy little、um, shipping companies right here. I am at the border right now. I'm in the process of shooting a new documentary. The the crew's over there, busy、uh, getting some B-roll. We'll go go towards them. I'll show you. But anyway, back to what I was saying. The same goes for peanut allergies. <laughs> If you have a peanut allergy, don't come to China. Full stop. Peanuts is in everything, and they use peanut oil for. The majority of their cooking, you know, most cooking oil in China—it's either that,、um, like sunflower seed oil, or peanut oil. But the majority of it is peanut oil. So you'll find peanuts in pretty much everything you can think of. And the only way to make sure that you don't get peanuts or whatever it is that you're allergic to in your food here is to bring your own food or to go buy your own food at a supermarket. It's a sad state of affairs, but. Um, allergies just aren't taken seriously here in China, and it's true from my own experience that Chinese people in general don't have allergies. A lot of 
my Chinese friends might have a mild, mild allergy to seafood and shellfish, where they'll get like a red, red face or a little bit uncomfortable, itchy skin or something. Um, a lot of them claim to be allergic to alcohol, which is that um, Asian flush thing. But uh, you know, in general, uh, they don't have peanut allergies or or anything along those lines. And to drive this point home, you know, I was at the um, hospital and I was busy training uh, the doctors. People give me shit when I say I train doctors, but I did for years. That's what I did. I trained doctors for a medical training company. You can check out their website exclusively for years. Anyway, so in order to prepare them for the um, upcoming big event, they set up a big clinic to test the doctors to see if they knew what they were talking about. Here's our, our crew over here, by the way, setting up to get some B-roll. And I'm wondering when they're gonna get shit from security. It's gonna happen soon. So I'm just gonna, you know, you've got a lot of looky loo evil uncles and stuff. Anyway, I'll leave them to it and I'll carry on. <clears throat> so, uh, I went in there and I was there to test the doctors and see if they knew what they were doing. And uh, in the process, what happened was I, uh, sat down and I said to the doctor, hey, I've got an inflamed ankle or, you know, my foot hurts and they took x-rays and stuff and then he prescribed me medicine and the medicine he prescribed me was the antibiotic that I'm allergic to. So this is like the best of the best, really expensive little clinic that's been set up to treat overseas people and they still misdiagnosed me and gave me something I'm allergic to. So my warning to you is, if you're in China, be very, very, very careful. If you have any allergies, make sure you have antihistamines with you at all times. Um, another story, since I'm, you know, talking about this. A friend of mine that I used to work with, a work colleague, um, she was allergic to seafood, like deadly allergic. And we went out to have lunch with some of the students. This was at a, an English training center I used to work at about, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. So we're all sitting down and the, some of the students, the rich students, want to do, treat the teachers for, um, you know, for lunch. So we go to this restaurant. We sit down and they order for us and these dishes come. And she has told them already, as we were going into the restaurant, as we sat down, I'm allergic to fish, I'm allergic to seafood, I'm allergic to shellfish. And uh, they ordered the food and guess what? <laughs> they ordered food that had seafood in it. So she took a bite and immediately she knew something was wrong. And she's like, is there seafood in here? They said, yes, but it's only a little, so it should be fine. And she had to rush off and take her medicine and it was quite a, quite a scene. Because they don't seem to understand. There's this idea in China that, yeah, maybe you're allergic, it's okay, but you can just have a little bit and then sort of man man lie, you know, it'll get better little by little. So that's it. A stern, stern warning to anyone with allergies coming to China, watch out because you could be taking your life into your own hands there. Um, anyway, on the flip side of that, the positive side of it is that China's really just a big happy-go-lucky sort of mess, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And when you go out and you do your stuff, you can really just feel free to just be yourself. And if you're a tough sort of a bloke who can handle, you know, the sort of craziness that goes on here, you'll have a blast because you'll be out having all these weird experiences. You're not held back by the sort of Western overprotectionism type thing that happens, you know. I do find it quite stifling in the West, the way that uh, people behave when it comes to their diets and things like that. It can be quite annoying when people are like, oh, but I, I only eat gluten-free X, Y, Z, and I can't go to this restaurant because they're not, um, you know, I don't know, like this and this compliant, or, you know, I don't believe in these people because, you know, there's all that nonsense and it can really spoil the mood. But here in China, it's basically just one big free-for-all. And uh, that can be a very positive thing, especially if you're a young guy or a young girl who's out for an adventure. Anyway, I think I've said my piece. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, you know the drill. Look, get, in, get some light here. And as always, you know the drill. Stay awesome. <laughs>